Hey, this is Anton over at thehyperadvisor.com. I'm going to go over a quick tip here that uh, uh, of a feature that many people may not use uh, when they're using uh, ESX and their VI client, uh, and that's the the copy paste feature that is um, given to you within the VI client. So uh, one use case of doing the copy paste would be if you are this is your first initial um, environment that you're setting up and you don't have a vCenter already configured you would connect as I have here directly into the uh, ESX host and what you notice is here I created a virtual machine and I installed Windows on it um, all the patches etc and if you want to create a template out of this uh, you'll notice that you can't get it unless you're in vCenter so if you don't have a vCenter created yet then that functionality is gone to you um, you could export it if you chose to that's one way uh, we can go in here and export to an OBF as an appliance and then re-import that in as a new virtual machine that's one way you could do it, um, but I've, I've found it in, um, on slow networks to, to, to kind of be uh, more of a, a hassle than, than uh, giving me extra capabilities versus the copy paste. So, um, and with the template, if I go in here, I think I have a, <coughs> a virtual machine that I've set that, that is configured as a template here we'll say this one here and we can see this is a template um, by the file extension and if I want to right click and add that into the inventory you'll see here it will go through the wizard initially here finish and boom it'll error out so it's not supported if you're connecting directly to your ESX uh, host so your first initial setup you will have some challenges if you don't already have a vCenter and this is just one way around it so what we do here is that you know I've shut the, the virtual machine off and you can see it's the my test and I'm going to click on the my test here and if you go to the VMDK file you'll see that we have the option to where we can we can do a copy here now there's some other options we can cut we can move this here download inflate etc but the copy feature is what we want to use here so before I do that though I'm going to use this as my initial say template uh, even though it's not an actual template within VMware but as I said before I've already installed windows on it patches etc and basically I'm going to create a new virtual machine and we can run through this create the virtual machine without a without a VMDK or a disk file and let's choose the right OS some of these configurations don't really matter we can change them later next next and but at the select the disk disk option uh, just do not create any disk and we're just going to go ahead and finish that that off and let's actually create another one so and, and this is another benefit we can go through here and we can create more than one uh, virtual machine here and we can actually spawn multiple copies um, at the same time which is a lot more beneficial than the exporting of the the OVF you know in that initial phase because you can you can only export it once and then you have to wait for that to export and then you could import it uh, multiple times but this doing it this way will get rid of that initial export process and time that's involved with that Again, no, 
uh, create with no disk and we're gonna finish there alright so all we need to do is go in into the, uh, the data store browse the data store back where I was before I'm gonna go into the folder directory for that VM I'm right click copy and we created when we created these of course it created the folders that's relevant to those uh, new one new here oh, I have a VMDK in there. Okay, so here are the ones that are for these actual virtual machines. You can see I had some other ones in there. Uh, those were, should have cleaned those out, of course, first. But we can see also that there are no VMDK files in here. So what I could do is go in here, right click, and paste. So that's going to start um, process right here and we can if we look in the task you'll see that there's a uh, copy process that's going there um, we can we can also go ahead and paste the other one as well so you can kick off multiple uh, processes for doing the, uh, the copy so these these will go simultaneously in parallel um, in comparison like I said before to doing the export of the uh, the OVF or the appliance and then re-importing it in it's just a little more time involved with that process so here we'll we'll let these go these are gonna actually take a while before they they um, finish because the disk files are, are pretty large and I'm on a slow network here in my lab uh, just another note, you, you can X out of these if you want it to. The back end process is going to keep running. Um, I've never had it quit on me. Okay, so now that the copy is, is finished, we can go into the, the VMs that we created without the disk, and we all we want to do is edit them. And we can add that existing disk that we copied um, over to the um, the new folders for this these VMs. So we'll scroll down in here. Here is the copy uh, disk in this one folder. Now you'll notice that the name uh, is still the same as what it was on the original. Uh, we won't be able to actually change the name from the GUI. So if we went into the file and we wanted to into the uh, the data store and we wanted to change this, say the test one here, um, it'll tell you that it's not supported. So from the GUI, um, this this can't be changed but what you can do later on a uh, simple easy way is to do a storage vmotion and that will actually change the, uh, the this file name to the respective uh, virtual machine name so we'll click out of that one and if we go into the second one here we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing we'll add it Go to the folder. We'll add. Hit OK. And now both of those are done. Um, basically, when, when I'm setting up a new environment, if I'm going to virtualize all the components for uh, vCenter, you know, I, I create two just because I want to separate the, the SQL server from the actual uh, vCenter server. So, you know, in this, this case, we can keep that initial one. Once we get um, vCenter installed, we can convert that to a template and then put SQL and vCenter separately on, on two different uh, virtual machines.
and I'll use that SQL Server for um, other components and not, not just for B Center, uh, maybe the uh, orchestrator database. Um, we can also use that for for view, etc. So all we need to do here now is uh, power it on. And depending on which operating system you're you're, you're going to be using, um, you're going to want to make sure that you either run new SID or sysprep just to take out any of the uh, unique identifiers that were on the other on the previous VM guest that you installed. So if we go in here we can see that it's boot you know the machine is booting up and that the OS you know is it, coming online. So it actually works. And basically that's it. You can do that as many times as you want. Um, again, I, for me, I just like to get Virtual Center up and then connect through Virtual Center, add ESX host, and then do everything from there. Because um, that way I can turn this that original one into a template and just a deploy from template. Um, that's it. Hope you like this uh, episode tip, uh, how to, etc. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also head on over to thehyperadvisor.com.